Dr. Frank Bano is the head of research at Dankwa Institute, but also a member of the Dr. Mamoru Baumia team. In fact, he is with the Economics Committee of the 2024 Manifesto <coughs> of the NPP and also Director, Head of Research, in fact, at Dankwa Institute. But this morning, for the purpose of this conversation, he's speaking in his capacity as a member of the Economics Committee of the NPP 2024 Manifesto. The Honorable Isaac Adongo is Member of Parliament for the Bolgatanga Central Constituency. He also uh, speaks for the Economics and Finance Committee of the NDC Manifesto. The Honorable Isaac Adongo, good morning. Welcome yes, to Key Point. Morning. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good, by his grace. Mm, then this is the first time coming on, on Key Point over the yeah. last two years at least. Yeah, the first time coming when you are hosting. Indeed. Yes, but I've been here for long time. It's good to see you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> We always have a big platform. So. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also, Professor Ransford Jampo, Professor of Political Science at the University of Ghana, Legon, also joining us in the studio. I'll welcome him shortly. But Dr. John Osai Kwapong is also a Dev Development and Democracy Fellow at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. He's joining us on Zoom for a quick conversation on the issues um, this morning. Dr. Saikwapong, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Key Point. Now, the, the incumbent, as we have seen, also launching their manifesto, the Baumia has met the media. And then now, the responses and the reactions afterwards. We're going into this election where the NPP is presenting the incumbent vice president as the candidate for the party. And the NDC also having the former president coming back or seeking a comeback for that matter going into these elections. Very interesting dynamics. The stakes are high from where you sit and from what you're seeing right now. Reset or upgrade, where would the pendulum swing? Or which message is getting the needed momentum based on your own reading of the atmosphere? All of the indicators would suggest that this should be a turnover election, right? Uh, if you think of the cycles that we've been going through since 1992, every party gets eight years. Yes, former President John Mahama got four years of his term in office, but his party had had eight years at the end of uh, 2016. So we've been going through eight-year cycles. In addition to the eight-year cycles, we are going into an election where we are coming off the back of some challenging um, economic times. Uh, the, the ruling party would even admit that there's been some challenges. Yes, they prefer, they, they, they give their own reasons as to, or they give reasons as to why we face those challenges. But on the back of the eight year cycles, we've been given political parties, plus the, the, the challenges that have been experienced over the last couple of years, everything would suggest that this is an election that would result in a turnover or in the way the NDC is putting it, that would result uh, in, a, in, a, in a reset. But there's also something, I don't want to say odd, but there's something interesting that I am observing about this election. The MPP is actually campaigning as though they are an opposition party, but at the same time is also exhibiting quite a lot um, of confidence, which makes me feel as though they sense an opportunity to be able to convince Ghanaians that 
we don't need a reset, or as and as Baumia will put it, uh, we need we need an upgrade. If you look at the recent the the last poll that came from Global Info Analytics, even though it still showed John Mahama as the likely winner of the election, you also do see some lost ground um, for for him, and you see some decline in support. Um, so it's making the election dynamics quite interesting and the way it's been framed um, even makes it more interesting for the Ghanaian voter in terms of do you want to go with a research agenda a reset agenda or do you want to go with an upgrade agenda for me ultimately it's we are facing some some challenges social economic some governance challenges as well the parties have put out ideas, and it is up to the Ghanaian voter to make their way through all of these proposals and ideas and go back to the first question that you ask, which is giving everything that I have felt, given all of these issues and all of these challenges, who do I trust to help address them for me? And the emphasis on that question that you ended with, who do I trust? to do what they said they were going to do or do what they have promised to do. So the element of trust is the most important ingredient now for the next 98 days ahead of us. Now, how impactful would you say this position of people looking into their lives or their status of condition in terms of their conditions of living to to influence their their voting because i've had conversations over the period where some have suggested that this show a that look at your conditions of living and de decide on who to vote for is going to be one of the major considerations for voters going into this election do you see that as well i definitely do see elements of that where voters would give consideration um, to that famous statement, you know, so there will be that element of the consideration of the issues. But I think it's also a political reality that every political party has a strong base of support they can always count on, whether in good times or in bad times, they can always count on a core group of supporters to vote for them. So I think that's where the parties would both be starting off from a base of support. The question of where the, the, the fight for the votes would come from would be those uh, 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 independents, neutrals, undecided, people who may even be dissatisfied with the ruling party and are considering switching over, people crossing over as well from the other side. That is, that is the middle where that position, sorry, where the election would uh, would be decided. But overall, I also believe that uh, the Ghanaian voter generally is sensitive to, uh, to the issues, um, are not just prone to sloganeering anymore that really they think of their economic situation, they think of their economic circumstances, um, and vote based on those economic circumstances, those living uh, conditions, and make informed choices as to uh, which party they want to, to go with. I mean, they could still be feeling the pinch in their pockets, but still choose to go with the uh, incumbent. That's a, that's a possible outcome that they will still trust that the incumbent can get them out of it. And then there are others who would look at the pinch they're feeling in their pockets and think, I want to try somebody else uh, because I believe and trust that they are in a better position to be able to uh, help me deal with the pinch that I'm feeling in my pocket. So, and, and I'll bring you in here now on the, the conversation about that media encounter that the flag bearer of the MPP had and the answers that were given to some of the questions which has generated conversation after this encounter now one that got a lot of reaction is that answer he gave to the question of 
why he wouldn't do some of the things that he is promising to do now that he's vice president. As in, for instance, abolishing the e-levy, the tax on bet winnings, and, and so on. And then the answer that if, if he does all of these things, then what would he do when he becomes president? Or what message or manifesto would he be taking into the election? Politically correct or think he got it wrong? You know, and then he, he laughed at the end of it. So for me, I took it as, you know, it was a lighthearted, it, um moment um, that you know sort of uh he was just trying to make uh something funny out of you know the, the 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 whole situation however i think looking at the you know the consequences of that answer or how that answer could be uh, misconstrued uh, it wasn't helpful to have framed his uh, answer uh, that way uh i believe that after having said that, what he could have added to that was, but you know, uh, beyond that, though the way the, you know, the way the system works, the way governance works, there's so much I can do as vice president. At the end of the day, it's an Ekufuado administration, um, and therefore some of these things I would have to wait for a Bawumia administration if I win the election to be able to do. I think an expanded answer like that would have helped because if you look at the, the post media engagement uh, conversation, it's uh, the, 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 the running commentary has focused on if I do everything now, what then would I do as president? And then now it's turning into um, a bunch of all of these funny one liners uh, that uh, has emerged from that. But I believe that uh, an expanded answer to have said, look, the way governance works, we are still in an Ekufuadu administration who may have his own priorities, although I'm the vice president and a member of his political party, I may have my own priorities, which would have to wait to be uh, executed under a Barumia administration. Well, thank you for your th the initial thoughts on this matter. Dr. John Osakwapon is a de development democracy fellow at the Center for Democratic Development, setting the pace